Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about um, individual development because that's actually very important for, um, for the social development. Uh, and since I'm really a uh, psychologist more than a sociologist, uh, it's more closer to my own heart. Uh, and one of the things that seems to be very important to sociologists, uh, it, uh, if only because most of the theories are built upon or reaction to this particular theory, the, mo this, the theory which is essential is the uh, Piaget's theory of cognitive development. Although the uh, Piaget's theory of cognitive development was actually um, was actually more uh, more a how the child begins a certain type of logical thought and actually in a sense becomes more of a um, a scientific thought. Nonetheless, I think it's a really important uh, to understand Piaget's idea. Uh, of cognitive development. And there's a couple of processes which one needs to understand in order to uh, actually work and understand and develop a, a good understanding of Piaget's theory. Uh, one, and the process, and, and we, you have to understand the process by which a child acquires uh, new concepts. So when uh, Piaget was talking about uh, uh, human thought. He said that a child can, there are two processes which a child gets new concepts. These two processes are called assimilation and accommodation. Okay, so assimilation is, uh, well, let's take the example of a child learning new concepts, uh, is such as learning the names of animals. So if he's learning names of animals, for instance, he might be talking about uh, the child, the mother says, look, there's a doggy. He sees a four-legged animal walking around with fur and, you know, doing this as a doggy, okay? So the child now knows in his mind he's got a concept of a doggy. That concept of a doggy is called the schema. Uh, and now the question is now when a new concept comes in, he's got to understand whether it fits into that schema or does not fit into that schema. Okay, that's the basic question which a child has to deal with. So, if he is going to bring something in, a new concept, and bring it into that schema, he's assimilating it to what he has in his mind. So, he saw about a little tiny chihuahua, and his mother shows him another doggy, which is a uh, St. Bernard and says, that's a doggy. He says, okay, so now he assimilates that all the way to, into his idea of the Now he sees a pussycat. And he says, a doggy. And, he, and his mommy says, no, that's not a doggy, that's a cat. I says, he says, a doggy. No, that's a cat. Oh, so now he's got to change his schema, differentiate between one and the other. He's got to accommodate himself. Okay, so one is assimilation and the other one is accommodation. That's just two basic concepts which we have uh, when we talk about... Uh, uh, when we talk about um, Piaget's system, I'm more psychological than it is on a, uh, uh, on, on a sociological, but it's important. Now, he says that there are a couple of stages, four stages. The first stage is called the sensory motor stage, okay? Where the sensory motor stage uh, is where a child understands things through his own senses, okay? He follows it, uh, in other words, he uh, will. Um, understand things only through his through his senses. He takes something, puts it in his mouth. He feels it. He, he, he feels that he's he's got. Uh, and this is between the ages of zero to two. Interestingly, this is really similar to what we saw in uh, in the pre uh, the, the pre uh, performance stage in uh, Mead's theory. Um, so in the century, he says he, he will, you know, a child might be fascinated with his hands and with his feet or something like that, uh, and, uh, but he has no idea of permanence. He has no idea the things that they're actually. Um, uh, if if you take something and you hide it, right? You take the iPod and hide it underneath it. He'll no 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 longer no longer know that it's there. His mother, when he goes out of the room, he loses interest because his mother is no longer in existence in a sense. Okay, because 
There is no object permanence. He doesn't know that things exist. He doesn't have any roles. He doesn't have anything. He just thinks these are ways that his own body works. The second stage is called the pre-operational stage. The pre-operational stage is approximately from ages two to seven. Okay, uh, during this time, uh, the concept, the a central concept, which is found here, is the concept of egocentrism. Egocentrism, an egotistical type of way of thinking. In other words, everything focuses around the child himself. Okay, uh, and what's important here, in a sense, that uh, uh, two things. Number one, everything is from his own perspective. And number two, uh, everything has his own uh, qualities. So, for instance, if, I were, if, if a child uh, is, wants to show you a picture in the book, so he will go and say, you see this picture, right? It's a very pretty picture. You, you see, and then, ah, but you can't see it because you're on the other side. You're looking from here. But as a little child in the pre-operational stage, he doesn't know that you're not you, that you looking from this side can't see it from this side. Okay, so that would be uh, from his own egocentric way of thinking. On the other hand, he also ascribes his own feelings to things outside. So he has. A, uh, he gives over a, a, he uses a the sense of animism. He animates his anthropomorphological thought. He uh, gives human uh, human qualities to inanimate objects. So um, the sun came up because he wanted to come up today, and if he and and a sun will hid behind the clouds because the sun was embarrassed, uh, or uh, ideas like that. And this, in other words. There, there's a, uh, a, a role playing on a universal scale. Uh, on that same primitive way, a child uh, will say that the way I understand things, that's the way things work. So if there's a, a particular um, sign, a particular um, symbol which symbolizes a role, then that will be what is he'll, what he look for, and everything else becomes insignificant. So, uh, if you see, a, uh, you, you show a child. Uh, I don't know how much this works today, but once upon a time, uh, all boys had short hair and all girls had long hair. And if you showed the child, uh, at least in American society, uh, if you showed the child two naked pictures, a boy and a girl and a boy has the short hair and the girl has the long hair, you'd say, which one is the boy? And he'd point to the boy and says, why? Because he has short hair. Because he wasn't familiar with Nothing else was significant. And the same thing was, uh, and, and if you turn, turned it around also, in other words, if you gave the boy, who was anatomically a boy, and, gave, and put long hair on him and short hair on the, on the picture of, an, 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 of a girl, then he would point to the girl and say, that's the boy. Because, why? Because... He has short hair. Now we use this a little bit, you know. If I, have, if you have a uh, a pretty boy with long hair uh, at two years old, an adult will assume it's a go it's a girl also because that's the only sign he has. But that's a whole different story. Uh, other things uh, also happen at that age. They don't have um, uh, significant in um, in Piaget's uh, constructs is he doesn't have uh, consistency. It's a, he doesn't have the ability of, of reversibility cannot, but let me explain this. If you take, for instance, a beaker of water, uh, a glass of water which is short and stout, and pour it into a tall, skinny, um, a, a tall, skinny uh, container, the child at the pre-operational stage will say that there is more water in the tall, skinny than in the short in the, in the short stout uh, container. And you can pour it back and forth and he will insist that it's more, even though he sees it stays the same from one to the other. Or if you take a, uh, a, a, a ball of clay, roll it out so it's long, the long one will have more clay than the ball, even though you can do it back and forth. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, this is uh, told to the lack of uh, a conservation. The conservation of mass, conservation of size, 
etc. Which is the concrete operational stage, right? The concrete operational stage, uh, a where which is between seven and twelve years old, and here the this you have a beginning of scientific thought develops this conservation this idea that uh, if you can move it back and forth, then it actually has the same amount. Uh, if you have children, if you know children these ages, you can do these experiments, and you'll find you'll find that this is exactly what it, uh, what what happens. Um, it can, but it can also can classify things in a series, uh, and he shows the comprehension of these basic relationship uh, relational concepts. And this is the, called the concrete operational stage. This is the stage between seven and twelve years old. And only afterwards does the child begin to have more uh, a developed thought, which in the fourth stage is called the stage of formal operations. The stage of formal operations is when mature adult type thinking, not that a 12 year old a child thinks in adult manner, but it certainly it is characterized by uh, the ability to use deductive logic, uh, a child will consider other possibilities that may or may not be right, uh, and uh, it can start to actually formulate and uh, test hypotheses. Um, so these, this is what happens uh, in the, these uh, levels in the Piaget, uh, in the Piaget way, of, uh, uh, way of thinking. Now, um, I don't think in our text we talk about Vygotsky, uh, although it really should be very important. A fellow named Lev Semenovich Vygotsky, uh, you find that more in your intro to psych class. Uh, but interesting because he was really a social cultural theory. He felt that children learn according to their social background. He was Russian, he was Soviet. Uh, so he was very much impinged upon by his social. Uh, structure and he said, in order to learn, even on an individual basis, you have to learn according to your social context. And I think it would be worthwhile to look into that if you have the chance, even on a, a for a sociological. Maybe I'll mention it in the class uh, in the class lecture. Um, uh, thank you.